40 years of people who make money from mass immigration, yes, who gain power through yes. mass immigration, they have they are doing this for very selfish purposes, but they have put on the mantle, they've wrapped themselves in the robe of anti racism. If you are against what we're doing, oh, not you know what they're doing for selfish purposes, but they won't say it's selfish. You are racist. And that scared a lot of people away. A lot of people who kind of know better have been afraid to take this on because they're going to be called a name. But it's it's extraordinary that that, a, that mass immigration, unfettered immigration, that has been so harmful to the African American community, but also to recent immigrants, can be it, that if you try to correct that, that somehow or another that's supposed to be racist. So you know we have to be bold and brave. This is a hard, wind, harsh wind that's blowing against, what did you call it? A wind that tries to stifle every bit of progress you're trying to make. I, that, I, I think that's a, that was a good word, stifling. And, you know, in some ways, it's almost like with this, this harsh wind of mass immigration, those of you who are trying to correct these various problems, sometimes the best you can hope for is to keep things from getting worse faster. I think that's true, but I think also we must possess the courage to do and say the things that need to be said and done. Uh, when I was at the parade yesterday and they were talking about Martin's dream, uh, it was a disaster. It was a nightmare because we have not made any significant group progress uh, since Martin had his dream. The things that he articulated uh, are are not a reality to the masses of us. And I think it's once again, we have been duped into believing that everything uh, that creates the conditions that we're in is because some white people who don't like black people or some Cubans who don't like black people, or it's always somebody else's fault. Uh, I think we know based on this conversation and your book uh, that the solution is much greater than that. And it's also greatly simple. It is simple. Isn't things it? that we ought to pay attention to and be bold enough and brave enough to challenge those things uh, in spite of what people believe. I believe, once again, uh, that all of our problems rest with us. I believe that one of the greatest contributors uh, in 2022 to our problems is not racism. It's not critical race theory. Uh, it's the fact that we have allowed ourselves to believe uh, that certain things that are our realities are born and birthed by somebody else. And I think the greatest contributor uh, is in your book. And one of the things I want to do, I want 50 copies of your book because uh, I want to make sure that all of my staff and all Black elected officials uh, in Dade County uh, get a copy of your book so they can see that the real solution to where we are is about our attitude about what we're going to do with our own life. That we keep getting duped about the fact that it's racism. We keep having this whole feeling of victimization that it's somebody else's fault. But when you allow millions of people to come in through the southern border and give them a work permit, do you think that we are going to make any significant progress in the labor market under those kinds of circumstances? against those kinds of competitors? I don't think so. And when that happens, uh, then somebody tells us that it's not because of the work permit, it's not because of the special privileges given to, to those new persons, it's because it's racism. Well, if it's racism, uh, then it's racism, but you gotta show me that. I don't think it is. I think that your book points out clearly what the solution is. And I think part of our responsibility is to challenge those who are in the trenches who can make the contribution to be brave enough to care enough to say that this is the real solution 